the person, smell of perfume, high heels and carpet, someone hearing sounds from another room, security cameras in the hallway somewhere, fingerprints. Hey, wait a minute, security cameras. For God's sakes, they have them in supermarkets. They don't have them in a, a resort with such high-powered guests. Oh, they were turned off. Right, right, right. Oh, they were turned off at the time for repair. <laughs> Look, if a professional did it, they wouldn't put a pillow on the face and leave it there. I mean, everyone knows that. So what's the pillow got to do with it? Well, what is this with the pillow on the face? What's the pillow on the face? Well, there's another answer to that one as well that uh, someone wrote to me about, but about. So initially when I heard heart attack, which has now been ruled out, I asked myself, what drugs? Immediately, Saturday night, I couldn't eat. I said, if someone killed someone, what murder, what toxin would be used? And what, would, what toxic would be used that would not leave any telltale trace? So what does that mean? No metabolic, no, no better, no better, no, I'm sorry, no be metabolic trace. Which drug would not leave any metabolites? Now, what's a metabolite anyway? It's a Democrat voter who hasn't been registered yet by Obama. No, a metabolite is a byproduct of the body's metabolism. It's what's left after the body breaks down a substance into either small parts or changes the substance, the drug that is, into other chemicals. So what drug leaves no metabolic traces? The answer is none. So which drugs would leave behind metabolites that are only normal to the body? See, everything leaves a metabolite. But some are normal to the body, so they wouldn't be detected. Oh, you didn't know that. Well, see, what I love, again, is that one of the most popular shows on television is always these kind of shows, this category, right, mystery shows. So that you heard about... Succinylcholine, didn't you? A thousand times you heard about SUX, a neuromuscular paralytic drug. Oh, my God, where are we going today? Where are we going today? We're going wherever your mind will let you go because the Savage Nation is talk radio for the thinking person. All right, so if you were to boil down everything that you heard in the last hour on this show, it comes down to, I demand an immediate FBI investigation. I demand, who am I? Nobody. I mean, what does it matter that I have millions of listeners and I've written seven bestsellers, seven New York Times bestsellers? What does it matter? I haven't been on the Oprah Winfrey show. I'm not known to uh, the D.C. establishment. I haven't been invited to the White House by Bush. I didn't eat lunch with him as the other so-called conservatives did. Oh, yeah, they were all invited in with the Bushies. Now they make believe they hate them. I love this. This I love. That breakfast at Tiffany's they had. They may believe they never at Tiffany's now. But let's get down to brass tacks. What does this mean? It means we want an autopsy, and we the people demand an investigation. And I don't mean the FBI. That's not going to work. The FBI is totally politicized. They're, they're paralyzed by Obama. He stops them at every turn. We need an independent counsel to investigate this death. We need the Magruder Commission. For those of you who know what I'm saying here. We need the Magruder Commission. We need a commission. We need a, we need a bipartisan commission. I don't care. Five Dems, five Republicans. But I want the truth on this death. And there should be no appointments until that report is published. They're not going to railroad Loretta Lynch, who called for the dismissal of the First Amendment. Never forget who that woman is. She demanded that the First Amendment be curtailed. She said so. We have the soundbite. Now he wants to take that New York judge and put her on the Supreme Court? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-728. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders. 
language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hear Blue Monday. Got to work, lack of sleep all day. It's the Savage Nation. So we are asking for a Warren Commission, not a Magruder Commission. It was the Magruder film, of course. A Warren Commission to investigate the death of Justice Scalia. That's what, we, that's what we the people demand. This is a very suspicious death. We've been talking about it for an hour. I will not repeat myself in the second hour. As a matter of fact, Donald Trump will be with us at the bottom of the hour. Just in, just this, just in. I was going to do the Scalia thing for three hours. And it'll keep coming up because some of my callers are, are just brilliant as they used to say in, in London, before it became Londonistan. They're just brilliant, some of my callers. So my good friend, the great writer, Jeff Rovin, says, by the way, justices don't get Secret Service protection, number one. Okay. But then he says, reverse engineer it. Why would Scalia have gone there with so many lunatic Dems? If he were poisoned, then the pillow is a red herring. You know, they could have saved themselves trouble just by sending him hunting with Dick Cheney. Oh, stop that. Of course, that entered my mind as well, incidentally. So, look, the conspiracy theories abound, and there's no reason for you to dismiss all of them as absurd since he was found with a pillow over his head in an uncrumpled bed. That's A. And I'll repeat again that a former homicide commander in, in Washington, D.C., William O. Ritchie, Formerly head of criminal investigations for the Department of Columbia Police, significant man, wrote in a post on Facebook yesterday, as a former homicide commander, I am stunned that no autopsy was ordered for Justice Scalia. Now, the Marshal Service said Scalia had declined the security detail while at the ranch, so marshals were not present when he died. I don't know, that's an, that's an iffy thing to begin with. You say, well, come on, why do you need a security detail at such a safe place, right? That's your figure, look, it's so remote, you know, it's filled with so many famous people. I don't know. <laughs> a guy like him who just turned down Obama on the green, uh, the green grift? He knocked out the green grift. It was a trillion dollars a year minimum. A trillion a year minimum of grift coming into the green gangsters. I'm sorry, not supposed to say green gangsters. Green is good. The green, the green criminals were going to rip off a million dollars, a trillion dollars a year minimum. And he knocked it out of the park. He stood in the way. So then they find some justice, uh, the piece, Cinderella. I see my name is Cinderella. I swear to God I couldn't make this up. It is Cinderella. The judge who said that he was based, he was dead based on info from law enforcement officials by telephone. Her name is Cinderella Guevara. I can't make this up. I've written three successful novels, Abuse of Power, Time for War, Countdown to Mecca. I couldn't have invented, if I had written the book that the justice, some crackpot little local justice who did this, her name was Cinderella. I said, uh, the editor would have said, look, Mike, you got to make it a little more serious than that. You can't call her Cinderella. That's such a stupid parody that no one's going to buy that. Her name is Cinderella. Her name is Cinderella. Presidio County Judge Cinderella Guevara said she declared Scalia dead based on info <laughs> on the telephone from law enforcement officials who said that there was no sign of foul play. I mean, local law enforcement officials in a border town in Texas. Did anyone see the movie A Touch of Evil done a, quite a while ago by Orson Welles? The whole thing is a touch of evil. Where are the... Where, where, is, where, where are Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg now that we don't need them? Answer, they'll never touch this one. Instead, they'll talk about the evils of PG&E, or nuclear power is bad, or coal miner's daughter. Why don't they do a movie about this? What a movie this would be. Oh, why don't they do a movie about the Islamist threat to the whole world? Nah. No, no, you don't do that in Hollywood. Only Christians are threatening. Only skinheads are threatening. You know, look who I'm turning to for an answer. That's all. Katzenberg and Spielberg. There's some answer I'm going to get from them. Or the music producer, the music man in New York. Geffen's going to give me the, the solution I need. They run the world. So Cinderella said she declined the autopsy. The manager of the El Paso funeral home that handled Scalia's body said Scalia's family insisted against an autopsy. 
Well, so far as I know, that could be overridden by a uh, federal government who thinks there's foul play. So, so, Mr. Ritchie, big man, important man, former head of criminal investigations for the D.C. police, who thinks the way any rational man would think, who could still think, said, quote, you have a Supreme Court justice who died, not in the tenets of a physician. You have a non-homicide trained U.S. Marshal tell a justice of peace that no foul play was observed. You have a justice of the peace pronounced death while not being on the scene and without any medical training opining that the justice died of a heart attack. What medical exists, what medical proof exists of an MI? Why not a cerebral hemorrhage, he asks. Now, this is interesting. Richie also raised questions about the marshal's actions. Remember I said who appointed the marshal? The marshal was appointed by the guy in the White House. This is out of a banana republic now. We've now melted down to like Uruguay. Obama's turned America into Uruguay. He said, quote, how can the marshal say without a thorough post-mortem that he was not injected with an illegal substance that would stimulate a, simulate a heart attack? Quote, did the U.S. marshal check for, for hemorrhage in the eyes or under his lips that would have suggested suffocation? Did the U.S. marshal smell his breath for any unusual odor that might suggest poisoning? My gut tells me there is something fishy going on in Texas, close quote. That's the former homicide commander for, the, for, for Washington, D.C. So when we talk about was Scalia murdered, this is not just to make you, oh, I'm listening, you know, he's making it up for contents. Went quail hunting again? Quail was one's vice president. What are they hunting for him? I could probably look him up in the D.C. phone book. Scalia's last moments on a Texas ranch quail hunting found in perfect repose under a pillow. Okay. And that's that. The pillow you didn't read about in the New York papers. There weren't a lot of publishers. This is a whole book already. The presses are screaming with, with books on this. Spinning around the clock, but no one will buy it. Well, election year. Come on. What do they care? So now, look, we could talk about what poisons leave no trace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, we go to our mystery writer, Jeff Rovin. He says there was nothing foul in his death, he said. Nothing foul. Only in the disgusting aftermath of Internet commentary by liberals. He said, if I said those things about Bernie or Hussein, speaking of vile, here are two of the scenarios being floated by my pals in D.C. This is an amazing thing I'm about to read you. I'm not giving it to you now. I'm going to make you listen through the break before I get to it. This is important. Before Donald comes on, you're not going to believe what's coming, what Hussein is going to nominate. And what Hussein is plotting right now. No, no, no. It's not the uh, supreme, supreme leader of Iran to be on the Supreme Court. I don't think even he could get away with that at, at, at this time. He could try it. No, it's not Fidel Castro. He could try that. No, it's not Al Sharpton who can't read or write, so far as I know. I don't think that would stop him from putting him on the Supreme Court. No, no, it's somebody else. Let's go to a caller. I haven't taken a caller. I'm too excited I am so excited with the horror that this country is facing under this gangster. I mean, the regime, uh, I mean, the whatever you call it. That I didn't even have a buffet brought in for lunch today. I ate a yogurt. I'm just too excited. I can't even eat. I'm besides myself with excitement at what's going to happen to this country if Hussein is allowed to get away with this. If Hussein railroads Loretta Lynch or another fanatical loser onto the Supreme Court, the country is finished forever. It will never recover. And you know that there's nothing to stop him. The only person who stopped him at all was Justice Scalia, who stopped him on coal, right? Stopped him on the Green Gang. And Scalia's now where? He sleeps with the fishes. Scalia sleeps with the fishes. It's eerie. The whole thing is eerie. It's criminal. I don't live in America anymore. I live in some banana republic now. I feel like I'm living in a banana republic. Things are going on that you could never think would go on in a, a country with a free press. Yeah, free press, sure. Uh, Sulzberger Jr., free press. That, that's some free press. He had a free ride all his life. How could, how could I have a newspaper? Or the other geniuses with the free ride. So what poisons leave no trace? I told you already. Succinyl colate. I told you that one already. Do we cover that? It's in the clip job. Ways to trigger a heart attack here. I got it buried in this. I was researching this. So there's a couple other ways. Potassium chloride, calcium gluconate, air embolism. The easiest way to knock someone off without detection is an air embolism. That's a forced heart attack.